Hi, I'm Sam Hazelding, author of Unfair Fight. I am thrilled that you're here today because I believe that maximizing your income, that you know, making the most possible money you can, is a skill that you can learn. But there are some core things that you absolutely need to do. And what I want to do today is go through what those core things are. Spell them out. There are only three things that really need to happen on a consistent basis. And then I want to give you a tool to create what I call an income incantation statement, which will help make it a make a new neural pathway that will help form new habits, that will form new behaviors, that will drive your income and will almost guarantee that you're going to get what you want. So I'm excited you're here and I'm really grateful that you're committing the time to master this. I love this. He who stops being better stops being good and that is so true. What we do matters. What you do matters. You know, but running a business you have an impact in people's lives. You add value and change people's lives. In business, you're touching lives. So what you do matters. So I believe that doing it the best that we can matters too. Success for you is not gonna be about doing what's easy. It's not even gonna be about doing what we normally associate with conventional standards because that's what your competition are doing. And some are, doing a, so some are doing it pretty well. So doing that's not enough. It, success is not even going to be about doing what's effective. It's going to be about doing what is most effective. Acting in the most effective way. So that you get yourself to a point where you give yourself the highest chance of being successful. Because what you do matters. There are two types of people, I believe. There are people who dabble. And there are people who commit to mastery. And the results these people get in their lives are completely different. They are worlds apart. Let me explain. When you start something new, you, I mean, everyone goes on a growth trajectory, don't they? They, they start learning and everything is great. You learn something, you, you get better results. And then you'll reach a plateau. And that happens to everyone. The plateau is where it starts getting hard, where your growth slows down. It might even drop for a little bit. Here's where the difference happens. Dabblers get to the plateau and go, ah, oh, it's not working. Give up, right, what's next? Start again. Give up, what's next? Start again. And they just dabble. They go from one thing to another, they flip, they flip. You know people like this, and the results they get are pathetic. There are people who commit to mastery. Masters do the same thing. They start, they get a growth trajectory, they reach a plateau, and they go, to be expected. What do I need to do differently? What do I need to learn? What skills do I need to develop? What character do I need to build? Do I need to get a coach? Do I need to get someone else involved? What are, you know, how am I gonna get to that next level? And they, they figure it out and then they get to that next level. Business and maximizing your income is a skill and therefore it is learnable. So the question for you is do you wanna dabble or do you wanna master? And before you answer that, Play along with me for a moment. Close your eyes. I want you to get to, I want you to put yourself into the future. Age 70, you're looking back on your life. In the first scenario, you've dabbled. You've tried a lot of different things. You gave up when it got hard and you started something else. What does your life look like? I know what your life looks like if you've dabbled in your entire life. It's worse than it is now. You've made very little progress and joy and fulfillment in life comes from progress. You're probably in a worse financial situation than you're in now. Your relationships are probably pretty average as well. It's not a good looking life, is it? Keep, now open your eyes, shake it off. You're feeling good, aren't you? You're glad you're watching this video with me. I want you to close your eyes again and I want you to look back on life. You're 70, you're looking back and you've committed to mastery. You've, you've sought out, you know what was important in your life, you've learned, it got hard, you got busy. You, you got through the difficult periods, the plateaus, and you continued to master it. You've mastered a few important things. What does your life look like? And I know what that looked like, life looks like too. You're much more fulfilled, you're much more happy, you've created progress, you're excellent in the areas that are important to you. Your business, your finances are much better. Your re relationships are much better. It's from, a, it's from a, a commitment to mastery. So I'd encourage you, as you're watching this today, to think about this and make a decision to commit to mastering it.
because you're either in or you're out. There's no such thing as life in between. You're dabbling or you're mastering. I'd encourage you to make the decision to dabble. To, <laughs> I, I just mean to make the decision to master. I'd encourage you not to make the decision to dabble because if you decide to dabble, your life is going to look very, very different. And before we get into this, I want to talk about self-made millionaires because, I mean, being a millionaire, it's one thing at the moment, or you could talk about self-made billionaires as well. But whatever it is for you that is that next step up, there are three groups who, are, who, who dominate self-made millionaires. Business owners, executives, and salespeople. Business owners make up about three quarters. So if you're a business owner, you are in the group that can become a self-made millionaire. And I'll ask you to consider what's possible when you commit and when you put your mind to something. What's possible? You know, it's becoming a millionaire. It's making a million bucks a year possible for you. Let's think about what's possible when people commit to things. Nelson Mandela created a free South Africa. Oh, he's probably the only one, isn't he, who you know, really committed to something and, and created something exceptional. JFK, we're going to put man on the moon in a year's time, I mean, 10 years within a decade. Man on the moon. Sir Edmund Hillary, I'm going to get to the top of the highest mountain in the world. It's killed everyone else who's tried to do it. Got to the top of that mountain. You becoming a millionaire through your business? Is it possible? I think it probably is, isn't it? And you know that too. All we need to do is figure out what it is you need to do, how you need to show up every single day, and then train yourself, train yourself in the habits to make that almost certain. Because success is who you are. Your level of success is who you are. Who you are on the inside is only relevant to the extent that it impacts what you do on the outside. It's what you do with the time that you're given that matters. It's not just who you are. You are what you do. You are what you achieve. You're not just who you are on the inside. Who you are on the inside impacts what you do and what you achieve. But it's the external, it's the results in your life that are truly important. People will judge you on your results. They'll judge you on what you do and they'll judge you on your character. And that is absolutely right. Outcome setting alone isn't enough. You can't command success, but you can deserve it. Setting outcomes without taking action is the start of delusion. Writing out your values without then living those values and acting in a way is delusional. You've got to actually take action and do it. If you're a nice person, fantastic. What are you doing about it? Because if you're not doing anything, go tell your mum because she's the only one who cares. You're a caring person. You see something happen on the news. What are you doing? What are you going to do to make a difference? You see someone in pain, are you helping them? Because that's what caring is. Caring is an act, it's not just an emotion. You're a husband, you're a wife, you're a parent. What are you doing? How are you showing up? Because that is what matters. That's what's important, not who you think you are on the inside. You're a business owner. All right, how are you showing up as a business owner? What action are you taking? What results are you driving? Because that's what you get judged on. Your customers are judging you on the results that you deliver to them, not on the values that you have written on your wall. Let's, you know, I want to, to, to just display this. Let me, I hope this doesn't happen, but imagine you just watch this video and you leave this building. And as you leave, you get hit by a car and you're bleeding to death. So again, I hope this doesn't happen when you watch, finish watching this video, but imagine that it did. And someone shows up to help you and they rock on up what do you care about? Do you care if they've got a vision statement or a mission statement? Do they care? Do you care if they say their incantations in the morning? You care if they're a nice person, you don't. You care if they're an emergency department doctor who's going to save your life. What you contribute to others is what you do for them. That's what matters. If you're a great person as well, fantastic. That's even better. But that in itself is not a substitute for delivering what it is you need to deliver. You spend most of your waking hours at work, on your business. This is what you do. And you are what you do. So do you want to be excellent at it or do you want to be average? Do you want to be great or are you happy with the free stack knives? 
First prize is everything. Second prize is a free set of steak knives. Do you remember who came second in the last 100 meters Olympic running final? You probably don't, and if you do, I don't care who it is. We care about who came first. That's, you know, results matter. You are judged on your results. So let's work out how it is you're gonna actually drive those results in your life. So the first thing you need to do, you do need to set outcomes. You need to know the target. You need to know what you're aiming for. Aiming for. And the thing here is, there are simple ways to make this much, much more effective. And it starts with a question. There are three questions you can ask to set the level of outcome. And the chances of achieving what you want are completely different depending on the question you ask. Most question, most people set outcomes by asking the question, what can I achieve safely? And so they, they're here and they set the outcome here well within their comfort zone, but there's no passion, there's no excitement, there's no drive or desire to get there. So they don't even achieve that. So they see, oh, this is only just here and I couldn't even achieve that, so I'll give up. Have you ever broken a shoelace or lost a button and said, right, I need to get a new shoelace? I mean, I certainly have. And I found myself three weeks later still scriggling around with a little broken shoelace because I, I didn't get it. That's what can I achieve safely. I am more than capable of picking up a shoelace, but there's no desire, there's no passion. So I didn't do it. And I bet you've done the same. But you can't do that when it comes to the important things in your life, because if you do, you're not going to achieve what's important. So there's another level where you ask, what could I, would I like to achieve? Now this is a bit better, at least you start to get a bit of desire here. The problem here is you don't engage yourself 100% fully and emotionally. And the issue is as you move towards something, you move away from something else. That something else can be your peer group, could be uh, you know, your current life conditions, your comfort zone, and that's got a pull. That's trying to pull you back in. And if you haven't got enough emotion, desire, and passion attached to the outcome, you're gonna get pulled back in and you give up. And the, but there's a third level. There's a third question you can ask yourself to set infinitely more powerful outcomes. And that question is, what would excite me? What would excite me? This is the realm of possibility. This is where it gets exciting. This is, this is where you dare to dream. And the thing with asking this question is you set your sights way outside your comfort zone. You have to, because if you already, it wouldn't excite you if it's already inside your comfort zone. So you set your sights way outside your comfort zone. But because you engage yourself emotionally uh, with you know, the passion and desire and drive, that you, everything that you've got, 100%, you make yourself infinitely more likely to achieve it. So this is the irony, you set your sights way out here, you're more likely to achieve what you want than if you set your sights really close. And that confuses people. But this is the secret of people who achieve everything in life. The people who seem to be excellent at so many different things, who seem to get results in everything, they ask what would excite me? And so they engage 100% of themselves and they go after that like a freight train and they achieve what's important to them. So stop setting goals, start asking what would excite me. If you take away one thing from this video, I hope it's that. Now, there's a second thing you can do. There's two different classes of outcomes. And this is why I call them outcomes and not goals. When you call something a goal, you make it okay to fail. If I said I've got a goal not to beat my wife this year, you'd say that's weak. Just don't do it. That's the difference. A goal and what I call a standard. A standard is non-negotiable. Just do it, just don't do it, whatever, but it is non-negotiable. Compare, I've got a goal not to beat my wife this year, to Claire is the most important person in the world to me and I'll do anything and I'll protect her with my life. All right, there's a difference, isn't there? There's a goal and there's a standard. Which one is more likely to achieve the outcome that's important? To make something a standard, what you need to do is just ask the question, why is this important? What's it gonna do for me? What's it gonna do for the people I care about? Because we'll all do more for the people we care about, won't we, than for ourselves. Why is this important? When the why is strong enough, the how will always reveal itself. What, and the other way of making a why powerful is, what's it gonna do for me if I don't achieve it? Because we'll all do a lot to avoid pain and we'll do a lot to gain pleasure. So what's the pain associated with not achieving this? And what's the pleasure associated with achieving it? When you do these two things, when you ask what would excite me, and then you ask why is that a must? Man, you'll set outcomes that are powerful, infinitely more powerful than most people who are asking what can I achieve safely? So just ask that, what would excite me? The next thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to do something, aren't you? Because just setting outcomes by itself and then not getting busy, 
is the start of delusion. So how are you going to get there? You're going to need an effective strategy. There are a lot of ways you can do this, and if you're in business, I'd encourage you to make sure that your strategy is unconventional, that it's not what everyone else is doing, because 96% of businesses are, are failing. So you need to do things unconventionally. And let me very quickly just share a story about political scientist Ivan Aragontov, who did some research over the past 200 years where he looked at battles waged between sides that were one side was 10 times the size and might of the other. So a complete mismatch. And you'd expect the big guy to win every time, wouldn't you? But they didn't. The big guy only won 72% of the time. So Aragontov looked deeper, and he found that when the small side, the side that was at least 10 times smaller, used unconventional or guerrilla tactics, they won 63 or 64% of the time. They gave themselves an advantage, even though they were completely mismatched. So if you're in a business, and you're a small business, like 97% of businesses are, 97% of businesses have 19 or fewer staff, then I'd encourage you to think unconventionally, to act unconventionally, because that's what's gonna get you the results. You need to do things unconventionally, that's what's gonna be an effective strategy. And you need to apply the law of success, which is go another mile. You know, when everyone else is giving up, take another step, go another further, because the effect is in the cause. The end pre-exists in the means. The fruit is always found in the seed. The outcome is found in the cause. So you need to work out that cause. You need to know what are the critical drivers, what are the actions, the behaviors that you need to operate with day in, day out. Because when you focus on those, then the outcomes take care of themselves, don't they? Top sports teams know this. Top sports teams, when they're at a clutch point in the game, they don't focus on the outcome. They're not saying anything, we've got to win, we've got to win. They're focusing on, what do we need to do? What do we need to do? What do we need to do with excellence? Moment to moment, because that's what's going to deliver the outcome. And you can make your, what you do, the process, you can make it a goal or a standard. And I'd encourage you for those important things, make them standards, make them things that you just do. They're non-negotiable. Because when you do the things that, in a way that's non-negotiable, the things that are gonna move the needle in the right direction, then you will get the results. The outcomes will take care of themselves. And the third thing is character. It is important because it underpins everything because it impacts the actions you take and therefore the results you get. But that's why it's important. It's important to the extent that it impacts your actions. By, because of that, it is the driving force of success. It's the big differentiator. But only because it impacts what you do. Writing your, your values or your character on the wall doesn't mean anything. You've got to actually act in that way. So the question for you is, who do you need to be? Who do you need to be to achieve your process, to achieve your outcomes? How do you need to show up every single day? Now, what I'd encourage you to do is make a list and then pick the top three to five. Three is the best. Now, there's gonna be a lot of things. You know, you, you'll know, notice courage, tenacity, discipline, um, resourcefulness, playfulness, whatever. I mean, there's a million things you could list and you're gonna to wanna to be all of them. But we can only focus on a few things. So I'd encourage you, make your list, cut it down to three or five most important things that if I just show up with these every single day, the out, you know, I will do what I need to do to achieve what I need to achieve. And then focus on them daily, be them every single day. For me, mine are purpose, passion, and presence. And I know if I show up with these things every single day, then I'll act in a way that means the outcomes will take care of themselves. So what I want to share with you now is what I call the, an income incantation statement. And this is to help make you know, who you are, what you do, and the outcomes you want a big part of who you are to create a new neural pathway uh, so that it becomes an inevitable habit as opposed to something you sort of learned about and then didn't do anything with. And the first time I did this was back in 2006, and I learned this from Napoleon Hill's 1937 brilliant book, Think and Grow Rich. I said it would make a million dollars of, of personal income by, you know, by my 30th birthday, by December 6, 2008. And on December 6, I sat down, I worked out what I earned in the previous year. It was a million and 72 dollars. I hit it almost exactly. And I was like, whoo, this is fantastic. So I stopped doing it. Why is it we do that sometimes? Why is it we learn these things that derive amazing results? And then we get the result and don't think we need to do it anymore, forgetting that what it was that helped to drive that result. Anyway, I didn't do it. 
and I reinvested all the profits back in the business over the next few years. So I didn't you know, pull out that much income. Um, but I'm doing it again now. Learned my lesson. And you know, things are going in a fantastic direction again. We're able to actually grow and make a whole lot of profit at the same time because I'm focused on it. To be effective, your income incantation statement needs to cover the outcome. It needs to cover the process and it needs to cover the character, who you are, how you're going to show up. So let me share with you how you do it. And I'll share mine, which will give you an example of how you can create it. So I'd encourage you at this point, you may want to, you know, you definitely want to be taking notes, write this down, and then you're going to create your own. Mine is I, Sam Hazardine. I'm so happy and grateful for acquiring in excess of $15 million in assets and producing a personal income of greater than $3 million per year by December 6, 2008. Sorry, I'm confusing with my old one. I'm going to start again. Because I was going, I was going back. These things, are, it's what's interesting, and I'll tell you, I'm, you know, I'm not going to edit this out. What's interesting is how ingrained these things become that I just went back to the original one that I was doing back in 2006. But I do this other new one daily now anyway. So I, Sam Hazard, am so happy and grateful for acquiring in excess of $15 million in assets and producing a personal income of greater than $3 million per year by June 30, 2014. I've achieved this fine enriching lives by creating the greatest medical recruitment agency in the world, by showing people that anything is possible and giving them tools and strategies to help make their lives exceptional. I live with purpose, passion and presence. I'm committed to making each day my masterpiece and I enjoy and am grateful for every moment of my life. That juices me, that gets me excited. So let me break it down with how you're gonna create yours. I, put your name in, am so happy and grateful for creating a personal income of greater than what? What is it you want to earn? You know, what would excite you? Not what can you achieve safely. What would excite me? And you may want to do, you know, your, your net worth or whatever it is. But this is the this is the outcome, the, the, the monetary outcome. I've achieved this by how do you what do you need to do day in, day out, consistently to show to, to, to derive the results. I live with character. What are the three things that are most important for you to be? I'm committed to, what are you committed to? Making each day a masterpiece? Constant and never ending improvement? What is it? And I, what emotion is it that you then live with? You know, you enjoy and are grateful for every moment of your life. You're grateful for each moment that you're given. You know, whatever it is. But you put all this together and you create something that's really powerful that's focusing on what do I want? How am I gonna do it? And how am I gonna show up? I, Sam Hazen, and I'm so happy and grateful for acquiring in excess of $15 million in assets, producing a personal income of greater, you know, I, I know this thing inside me, and I can just, I just jump straight into it, but I'm doing this, every, you know, when I wake up, in the car, when I exercise, you know, when I'm working out at the, in my, my home gym, I do it between sets, when I go to bed, you know, I ingrain this thing in me, because it, you gotta create the habit, you gotta create a new neural pathway that makes this part of who you are, and it takes 30 days to create a habit. NASA did a fantastic experiment I thought was so interesting. They put astronauts or potential astronauts in with glasses on, convex glasses that flipped the world upside down because they were trying to see what it would be like to, to live in zero gravity. Cool. So, what was really interesting though is that at day 25, between day 25 and day 30, every astronaut who kept the glasses on consistently their brain flipped the world up and they started to see the world the right way up. But, there was a group of astronauts who took the glasses off for a brief period on day 15. For those astronauts, the clock reset. It was another 25 to 30 days to create, you know, for their brain to adapt and to create that new neural pathway. And I look at it like this, you know, a habit is like is a neural pathway. And if you've got long grass in a field and you're walking forwards and backwards, moment, day in, day, day out, you create a path that's so easy to walk down. You want to create a new habit or a new behavior or a new action that you're going to take, you've got to push your way through the grass, you've got to fight your way through it to start with, and it's hard. But you keep doing that day in, day out for a minimum of 30 days, you will beat down a new path and the old path will have grown up and become harder to go back to. But if on day 10, day 15, whatever you go, ah, oh, it's too hard, I'm just gonna spend a day back on the old pathway, you break, down the, you break down the new shoots, you reopen that pathway, and this one grows up again. 30 days to create a habit, 30 days to create an abundance mentality in the neural pathways that you need to support it, and I encourage you to try it. Because we're here to win, aren't we? We're not here to try. Trying entertains the possibility of losing, of ultimately losing. Hey, I know you're gonna fail. 
I fail all the time, but I'm never def I'm not, I don't let myself be defeated. Defeated as a choice. Trying entertains the possibility of defeat, of losing, of giving up. With winning, there's only one outcome. It's getting what you need, getting what you want, of winning. It's a mentality, it's a mindset to say, hey, I'm gonna fall over, but I'm gonna get back up. The secret of success is if I fall over a thousand times, get up a thousand and one. Get up a thousand and one. Winning is a choice that you get to make. So is defeat. I'd encourage you to choose winning because you are a self, you are self-made. Whatever self that is, whether you're a self-made success or a self-made failure, don't kid yourself. Don't do yourself the disservice of pretending that you're not self-made. Only you are responsible for your own success. So the question is what self do you want that to be? What outcomes, what process, what character traits do you want to be known for? Because you are known for all of those. You are judged on your results. So what results do you want those to be? Be honest about it. And then decide, am I gonna dabble or am I gonna to commit to mastery? Because if you commit to mastery of your business, of your income, then you are infinitely more likely to achieve what it is that's important to you and what you want. You're infinitely more likely to create a life that you can be proud of, a life where you create progress and fulfillment, and you have, you have a massive positive impact. One year from now is going to arrive. That's a given. What isn't a given is where you're gonna be in a year's time. Are you gonna win or are you gonna try? Are you gonna dabble or are you gonna to commit to mastery? Are you gonna make this the year where anything is possible, where you master business, where you master you know, your job, where you master your personal income? Because when you do that and you commit to excellence, you commit to mastery, man, life becomes a whole lot more exciting. It's a lot more fun to be progressing and even when it gets hard, hey, that's when you get busy. That's when you decide to, to find a new way or a new approach or get a new coach or whatever it is you need to do, but that's when it gets exciting. Every time you quit, a piece of you dies. A small piece of you dies when you quit and you start something new. And I mean, ultimately, a lot of, most people spend their lives just quitting when it gets hard and they get to the end of their lives and they look back and I'm sure they just think, man, it wasn't the way to, that wasn't the way to live. But don't make that mistake. You get to make the choice right now. You get to decide to commit to mastery and to master your business, to master your income, to create a life and a business you can be absolutely proud of. So look, thank you for watching this video. But watching the video isn't enough. It's what you do with the video afterwards that's important. Go away, create your income incantation statement. Please do that, do yourself that service and then commit to it for a minimum of 30 days and I guarantee you'll be hooked. So thank you for watching this. I appreciate you. I appreciate the time you've invested in this. I'm Sam Hazeldean, and remember that anything is possible.